what should you be tracking as a news website, a blog, or any other website that is centered around content? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you my take on what you should be tracking for content websites in Google Analytics. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there, and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and on this channel, we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials, and give you tips on better tracking, just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now, a while ago, we did a video on what to track in general in Google Analytics. And the conclusion of it all was that you need to customize your tracking. Only track the things that are important to your business. Now, what are these important things? Well, that depends on your business. We already did a video on what to track for e-commerce stores, but now I wanna go into what to track for content website. That could be a blog, a news website, or any other website that is centered around content, really, where the content is the main piece that you want your users to consume when they come to your website. Now, we'll break this all down into the basics, then the advanced usage, and the pro usage of Google Analytics in context to content websites. We've got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Now let's start out at the basics, and those are really the same for any website out there. You get your source tracking in order, and you get your goals set up. Now, source tracking is all about UTM parameters. So if you don't know how to use them in Google Analytics, check out our video that we did previously. Uh, or down below and making a habit of tagging your URLs of your landing pages so you can identify where the traffic is coming from. Very important for Google Analytics. The second thing that you wanna set up are goals. Now, goals are really something that you should be connecting to your business objective. What makes the money and what is the action or the behavior that you want your users to take in order to define success on your website. Now there are different business models out there that um, support content websites, for example, uh, advertising, lead generation, or um, just purely branding in a sense that they want you to read the content on the website. Now for these business models, the goals set up would be different. Now for an advertising website, you probably want to attract as much traffic as possible, generate as many page views, and also let the user generate as much page views as possible. That's something you can set up in Google Analytics. The actual page view per visit is a goal that you could define for an advertising driven website. You would also define many page views or a threshold of page views in, in a certain given day as a goal, that might be something that you want to do in order to define success for your website. For a lead generation website where you have content and you want to have their email address and the sign up would be the most valuable thing on your website, you obviously would track that interaction with event tracking possibly, or if the user sees another website or page after he signs up, you might want to consider this as an input for your goals in Google Analytics. Last but not least, if you're purely content and you really don't have any kind of call to action on your website or sell any advertising, then you might want to define as a goal when the user reads through your content. That's a little bit more technical to set up. There is an event tracking by Justin Cotroni that I will link up in the description below, which talks you a little bit through this, but it really clearly defines a reader in your users that come to your website. And that's a very good success metric for content. If people actually read through it and take the time to read through it. And these then are a successful conversion on your website. And I would put that in as a goal conversion in Google Analytics. Now let's go over to the advanced stage. This is where you would probably have a little bit resources available. You have more time to look at the data and wanna get more insights out. The first thing that I would recommend is to get more context about the page views that are generated. You have a lot of data now in your Google Analytics and there's something you can look into for content groups, for example. Content groups are basically a classification of your page views. So you can see if people visited the homepage, the category pages, the post pages, or the classified section on your website. And this will help you to find out what are the most popular sections of a website and maybe also how people are moving through your website in the different sections. The flow analysis is a very good report in Google Analytics that let you 
um, sought by content groups. Now, the second thing I would invest in advanced stage is event tracking. So if you have any kind of interactions on your website, you'll be able to track them with, for example, Google Tag Manager really easily. So any kind of call to action, any kind of outbound link click, but also interactions such as scrolling might give you more insights about how the users are using your website. One method I mentioned before is the scanner reader tracking from Justin Cutroni. And I'm gonna link that up in the description below. So check that out if you wanna get a little bit more sophisticated about your tracking in Google Analytics. All right, which brings us now to the professional level. And the professional level is really when you have enough people to analyze the data, look at the data and run a very professional organization already in terms of analytics and the team that is set up and the resources that are, are allocated to analytics. What I would recommend there is segmentation. Now segmentation can only happen if you have enough context and enough custom data attributes in your system. What comes to mind there is custom dimensions. Now what can you send into Google Analytics that are custom dimensions for a content website? Check out the post in the description below by the next web guys. The next web has 50 custom dimensions in their Google Analytics Premium account and it's quite astonishing what they came up with to segment their users and give them more attributes and give those page views more attributes and all the actions that can be taken on the website. At that stage, you wanna be able to differentiate your users. So are there returning users? Are there subscribers? Have they read one, two or three blog posts or clicked on any ads? This is some custom information that you can send into Google Analytics, but there needs to be somebody who can also analyze it and find the right insights out of it. The second tracking, which is a little bit more sophisticated is about the content itself. So if you have different authors, these authors might be interested in how can they improve their content in order to make it more sticky or more viral and tracking things like social shares, but also how many pictures were in that blog post, uh, what the author was, um, how long the content piece was, can give you a lot of insights on how is your actual content performing and making it more accessible to different other groups, measuring against the goals that you have set up in Google Analytics anyways. So there you have it. These are my tips on how you can be tracking a content website with Google Analytics. Now, did you find that useful? Do you have any more concerns, more tips, more questions? please leave them in the comments below. Now we have new videos coming out every Wednesday, so hit that subscribe button so you'll stay up to date with what we are doing here at Measure School. My name is Julian, till next time.